In this video, I want to take a look at doing a hypothesis test, in this case, on a proportion. So the setting that we're going to take a look at is uh, in the 2010 World Cup, which took place in Germany, um, various countries, in addition to having their soccer teams play each other, they had psychic animals that were trying to predict the outcome of the events. Um, and then they kind of looked at which of the animals was the best predictor. And so uh, the World Cup was in Germany. Paul the Octopus, he was in an aquarium in Germany, and he predicted all seven of the um, matches that Germany played in correctly, as, as well as the finals he predicted correctly that Spain would, was going to be the champion. So Paul was 8 for 8 in terms of his predictions. And he just barely beat out his rival, Manny, uh, the psychic parakeet from Singapore. Um, so what we would want to, what I want to do here is just kind of think about, okay, Paul was correct at predicting 8 out of 8 games. Does that mean that Paul actually had some psychic powers? And let me just say... Um, how did Paul predict these games? They put um, two boxes in his tank with the flags of the different competing countries. So here was Germany going against Spain. And they put food in these boxes and they looked at which box did Paul choose to eat from. And that was how he predicted his winner. So here was the semifinals, Germany and Spain. And in fact, Paul correctly went against his home country of Germany and predicted that Spain would be the winner. Um, so Paul was 8 out of 8, but of course, Paul might not be making predictions here. He just might randomly be choosing one of the boxes. Um, so let's see how we can set up a framework for a hypothesis test to determine whether, at least statistically speaking, Paul has any psychic powers. So the first step in the process is to set up your hypotheses. And when we're stating these hypotheses again, it's really important that we state them using population parameters. So we've got the null hypothesis and uh, the alternative. And these are claims about the population proportion. So that's why we use P. So first thing we want to make sure is that we're using the correct notation for the parameters that we're making these claims about. Um, and then we're always going to use an equality sign in the null hypothesis, and the alternative is going to depend on, on what they're trying to prove. So um, here, the null hypothesis is always the boring claim, which in this case would be Paul is not psychic. In other words, Paul is just randomly guessing. And so if Paul is just randomly guessing, there are two teams playing, he has a one out of two chance of guessing correctly. And um, the alternative hypothesis, this is the new interesting result that they're hoping to gather evidence to support. So in this case, what they're hoping to show, or what we're hoping to show, is that Paul is psychic. And in terms of our population parameter here, what that would mean is that we're claiming that this proportion P is greater than one half. So those would be our two competing claims. Um, and now it's worth noting that we have a greater than sign over here. So this means we have a one tail test. We are gonna actually use a right tail test. Since for us, we want to find evidence even more extreme, even more to the right of P being one half. Okay, so um, that's how we would set up our hypotheses. And it's good to make note of where the area is that we're looking for when we calculate the P value eventually. Um, okay, so then the next step would be to think about, well, 
how unusual would it be if Paul was just randomly guessing? And that's exactly what the p-value is representing here. So the p-value here would be representing um, if Paul is just guessing, how likely is he to get eight or more correct? So um, here our kind of test statistic is going to be x, which is going to be the number of correct guesses. And so x, right, is going to be a binomial distribution since each match that Paul predicts is independent of the previous one, and he has the same odds of being correct in any one of these matches, which is one half. So there were eight matches. Each match has a one-half probability of being correct. And so for us, our p-value is going to be what's the probability that we would get eight or more correct out of eight guesses. And, in, and here, eight is actually the most extreme that he could get because you can't get more than eight correct guesses out of eight attempts. And so here we can calculate this p-value using the binomial distribution. So this p-value we could calculate, for example, by saying, um, well, the odds of getting eight successes would be one half to the eighth, right? So each game he's got a one half percent chance of being correct. Um, or we can think about this using the binomial distribution. So we would want to calculate what's the probability that x is greater than or equal to eight, which in this case, since eight is the most possible values that they could get correctly, in general, this statement is not true, but for this example, it is true since eight is the maximum. So using um, R, for example, we could use the d-binome function. And remember, the d-binome function is going to tell us what's the probability of getting exactly eight guesses correct. Um, so depending on the circumstances, you might want to use a different binome function. You are probably going to want to use the p-binome because you're going to want to add up all of the possibilities that are more extreme than your observation. Um, but for us, eight is the most extreme. Um, and so calculating this in R, um, that winds up giving us a p-value of 0 0.0039. So this would be our p-value. And so the distinction that I'm making here with how we previously looked at permutation um, hypothesis test is we ran some permutation tests doing simulations um, and that gave us good ways of estimating the p-values but here we can calculate the p-value exactly because we know what the underlying distribution is it's binomial and we know how to calculate probabilities precisely from a binomial distribution so here we've got a p-value of 0 0.0039 and then the very last thing we want to do then is make a conclusion um, based on this p-value. So we've got a p-value, which is uh, approximately 0 0.0039. And notice that is definitely less than or equal to our significance level. So when this happens, when our p-value is small, smaller than the significance level, that's great. So this means that our test is significant. Okay, we reject HO, and therefore we have evidence that Paul is a psychic. OK, 
Okay, so um, that's how we can statistically prove that Paul was indeed um, a psychic octopus in his predictions.